Hi, I'm Joe Emerson, CEO of Quantum Benchmark. We're excited to tell you today about the launch of our software system called TrueQ, which is software that runs on quantum computers to assess, optimize, and validate the performance of quantum computers for your application. Today, we're going to tell you about how to integrate our SDK, TrueQ, with the Google platform called CERC. While quantum computing brings new opportunities to solve important problems, uh, quantum uh, coherence, the, the very thing that makes quantum computation possible, makes it very difficult because it's prone to errors. To understand how quantum computers will perform for your application, you need tools to diagnose whether the quantum computer is returning the correct output. We have different tools for different tasks. The SRB and XRB modules give important information on individual qubits and specific operations, called gates. The cycle benchmarking module characterizes the global error rate across the entire quantum processor. The scalable error reconstruction module can efficiently characterize the dominant errors in a large-scale quantum processor. These tools are important for optimizing the performance of quantum hardware. For example, the output of the scalable noise reconstruction method can be used to design good error correction methods for the specific quantum hardware. The modules that be critical for anyone that want to do quantum computation on quantum hardware are randomized compiling and quantum capacity assessment. Both these modules take as input the quantum circuit for the application that the user wants to run. Randomized compiling creates as output a set of modified circuit that will circumvent problematic errors which can lead uh, to dramatically improved performance on the hardware. The quantum capacity assessment module puts a bound on the error probability on the output generated by the hardware. This is the only good way to know if you can trust the solution generated by the hardware. When the chips are big enough to run quantum computations that cannot be verified by classical computation, it will help the user understand how well the hardware can perform any application of interest. Let's take a look in more detail. The first stage of interfacing with any quantum computing infrastructure is to speak a common language. This involves creating a common understanding for how gates and circuits function. This can be done with a few simple lines of code. The conversion of gate formats is a two-stage process, one for multi-qubit operations and another for single qubit operations. Multi qubit gates in TrueQ's SDK are just string labels of the gate in question, which are converted on a case by case basis. We can see this here in the control gate performance. So we talk about a CX gate, so controlled poly for X, as CIRC's Q or C0, whereas the CZ is an, a native CZ gate in, in CIRC. Single qubit gates are converted using their matrix representation as an intermediary through CIRC's utilities. This happens in the code base right here. So we convert to a unitary matrix format um, using our utilities and then pass that through to, to CIRC's single qubit matrix to native gates. Our SDK's representation of a circuit is a Python list of cycles. A cycle is a set of all operations happening in a given time slice and is represented as a Python dictionary mapping qubit labels to gates. CIRC's analog can be constructed as a list of moment objects. The conversion process involves walking through the list of operations, converting each cycle into an equivalent CIRC moment, and constructing a circuit. The last stage is to interface measurement result formats. The CIRC SDK models measurement results as a list of outcomes, which are themselves lists of booleans representing 1 and 0 as true and false, respectively. Our analog of this is a dictionary from outcome strings into number of runs that produce that output string. To run this module, since we're not working on real hardware, the first step in the process is creating a simulator. The simulator has been configured with an error model consisting of a stochastic poly combined with an over-rotation. Now we create our quantum register, a focal point to all of the SDK's benchmarking routines. It is through this object that we create circuits for which to benchmark hardware. To benchmark all 50 qubits in our simulation, we need to loop over each qubit label, generating randomized benchmarking circuits for the qubits in question and populating the experiment's results from the simulator we configured earlier. 
In this example, we also do two qubit benchmarking of all adjacent qubits in the register, generating the circuits and providing measurement results in the exact same way. After this process has been completed, we generated two reports which give graphical representation of the errors in the system. The most important information that this module produces is the error rate, R, associated with each qubit. Here is the output generated from this run. The x-axis label shows each qubit, and the y-axis reports the error rate on that qubit, along with an error bar on that error estimate. The quality of the result is also color-coded for easy visualization. Note also the bottom plot shows the quality of the exponential fit, where red data corresponds to bad fits, which is an important indicator on non recovian errors, which are important to identify if they arise. Numerical summaries are provided beneath the figure for ease of reference. Remember that the results here are not associated with actual hardware, but were from numerical simulation of the kinds of errors you might see in actual hardware. Standard randomized benchmarking is an important tool, but much information is needed to get a good picture of the errors. Next, let's look at another important tool provided in the TrueQ suite, cycle benchmarking. Cycle benchmarking can assess the total error across the entire set of qubits during one clock cycle. This is important for assessing correlated and crosstalk errors, as well as assessing the total error probability of a circuit executing some application of interest. Here is how to run a cycle benchmarking diagnostic. First, the user configures a three qubit quantum register object that will be used to create our cycle benchmarking circuits. Next, the user specifies the parallel set of gates in the cycle. In this case, we are benchmarking a square root x on qubit zero and parallel with a controlled x on qubits one and two. Here we simulate some noisy implementation of this cycle and run the cycle benchmarking protocol on the simulator, which populates the results. Here are some figures illustrating the results of this software module run on the simulator. The left-hand figure shows the decays that were measured, and the histogram on the right-hand side shows the estimates of the error rate for the cycle, given by the dashed line, as well as the output of our bootstrapping method to obtain the confidence intervals indicated by the red lines. 